Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Brandon Souris. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is a, I just want to open by saying it's a sad state of affairs when the Parliament of Canada has to debate a motion such as this one due to the actions of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister violated numerous sections of the Conflict of Interest Act, and Canadians want their money back. As elected officials, we were expected, we are expected, to set the standard of high ethical behaviour. Is it really too much to ask that the Prime Minister repay hard-working taxpayers and be accountable for his lack of judgment? While Canadians know that elected officials are capable of making mistakes, they expect their leaders to own up when they are in the breach of their solemn duties in this House. A lot has been said today about the actions and behaviour of the Prime Minister, and members opposite would clearly like to downplay this incident. I truly believe that if the Prime Minister would have just come forward after this issue was brought to light and answered the base, most basic questions that have been put in front of him from not only members of the opposition, but also from the media and every Canadian, he could have saved himself a lot of grief and headaches. While well, one might question the validity of the Prime Minister's arguments to Mary Dawson, there is no doubt that even taking his story at face value, common sense would have said that the leader of our great country shouldn't be taking free vacations from someone who interacts with the Government of Canada on official business. And let it be said, nobody's criticizing the Prime Minister for taking time to spend with his family. We all understand the grueling schedules of elected representatives. I know how much time he has to be on the road and to be travelling to all corners of the country. But that's not the debate we're having here today. The issue at hand is that the Prime Minister broke the law. He dragged this colossal mistake on for over a year and in doing so only showed a side of the Prime Minister that many Canadians find unbecoming. He also stuck taxpayers with the tab of paying for his illegal soiree in the Caribbean. If this would have happened with any other individual with the Prime, within the Prime Minister's Cabinet, they would have been shown the door so quickly their names would have been deleted from the Prime Minister's Cabinet list within minutes. And by the next day, I wouldn't be surprised that the PMO would pretend not to have even known them. They would have been ostracized and been moved to the back corner of this chamber as to never be associated ever again with the government. And let's just ponder for a moment that if this was involving an individual within the public service, for example, let's say it was a deputy minister or an executive took a free vacation under the exact same circumstances, they would immediately be shown the door. And the next day when asked, every Liberal spokesperson would decry the actions of individuals and would promise to crack down on any incidents to ensure that this would never happen again. But because the individual in this circumstance happened to be their boss, not a word was spoken to even remotely criticize or question his actions. It would seem that once again our Conservative caucus is, being, is going to have to put tougher rules surrounding the ethical behaviour of the executive branch. Our dear Liberal friends, have a habit of pushing the envelope and eroding the trust of Canadians in their elected officials. And we don't have to go back far to see, in time to see a prime example of how we had to clean up the mess of a previous Liberal administration that found creative ways to be entitled to their entitlements. It was our previous Conservative government that brought in the Accountability Act to set new rules so that we would never experience the same level of mistrust and wastage of taxpayers' money ever again. Mr. Speaker, as it has been said by many, but I think it's worth repeating, that arrogance is the Liberals' kryptonite. And from what we have seen over these past few years, there is no evidence that they have turned the page from previous Liberal mishaps. No one here wants any elected official to go through this quagmire the Prime Minister seems to have found himself. Not only does he have the audacity to ignore pointed questions put forward to him, he believes that somehow he's the victim in all of this. Canadians deserve better than a Prime Minister who believes 
there is one set of rules for liberals and their friends and another set of rules for everybody else. Mr. Speaker, we've come a long way since the election of 2015. We went from such lofty language espoused during the campaign about how they were to change the way Ottawa worked to where we now find ourselves in this mess. This Liberal government was to be so transparent that they would have now set a new standard for all governments to follow. Well, Mr. Speaker, I wouldn't recommend any government across the country to replicate the actions of those who sit across from us today. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend a student council to look to this government as being a good example of how to operate. From the obfuscation to the lack of answers, there's no wonder the Prime Minister's approval ratings are starting to mirror those of his finance minister. And while some Liberal diehards still support this matter, him on this matter, I would argue that this Prime Minister and his actions fall very short of the behaviour that Canadians would expect from the individual who sits in the Prime Minister's chair. And let it be said that today's debate has nothing to do with personal attacks or mudslinging or whatever word that the Liberal House Leader has decided to use this week. If the opposition cannot question the government, I would say that this is a slippery slope that no one in this chamber would welcome. I would urge every Liberal member to demand from their, more from their leader. Their constituents certainly do. I would urge the Liberal members to call on the Prime Minister to pay back the hundreds of thousands of dollars that taxpayers have to fork out for his illegal Caribbean getaway. I would urge them to demand that the Prime Minister answer all questions that are put to him in this House and stop making excuses for his questionable judgment. Spending $200,000 in taxpayers' money on this illegal vacation doesn't pass the smell test. The list of unethical behaviour from this government continues to grow. Ministers and Liberal operatives have been caught wasting money left, right and centre, and the Prime Minister is losing credibility each and every day. From spending a million to renovate a Cabinet Minister's office to wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars to design a budget cover, the litany of Liberal largesse knows no bounds. I call on all members to vote in favour of this motion. The Prime Minister should cough up the money he spent on his illegal holiday and apologize profusely for his actions. While our deficits and debts grow by the day, and the Liberals nickel and dime taxpayers, they are pushing the patience of Canadians. The time has come to end this chapter and bring a close to these terrible, unethical lapses. When will he finally act the part of a responsible person and pay back the cost of his illegal travel? Questions and comments. Question and commentaire. The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. And um, again, I'm just going to, to reinforce the fact that the, uh, the Prime Minister was uh, exceptionally cooperative uh, with the Commissioner. Um, and uh, we've accepted the report. We've even gone further than the report the Prime Minister uh, has. And uh, since the report, the Prime Minister has had a tour of town halls, including our home province in Manitoba, to my colleague across the way, um, where people have been raising uh, what they believe are important issues, and they are important issues. They're issues dealing with things like jobs, uh, health care, the economy overall, our environment, lots of important issues that need to be debated. You know, it, it's, it's almost as if the Conservatives had an awakening, as if it's the first time the Commissioner has ever had to make a ruling on a Member of Parliament. That's not the case. There have been Conservative Cabinet Ministers where uh, the, the Commissioner had to, to take some uh, or, or ensure that there was going to be corrective actions uh, taken place. The Commissioner herself has indicated uh, as, uh, to, to the Prime Minister and, and to uh, the government as a whole her thoughts on the issue, and the Prime Minister has accepted it. It's time that the, the Conservative Party recognize what are the important issues of Canadians. You know, when they keep on referring to this payback, 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 
surely to goodness they would recognize that when the Prime Minister travels somewhere, there is a sense to provide there is a sense to provide security, and there's a cost to that security. There are people around the world that would like to see uh, harm to the Prime Minister of Canada. That security is not optional, and we believe, and we, uh, believe that that is something that's important to all Prime Ministers. Member for Brendan Souris. Thank you, uh, Speaker. Bottom line is, the Prime Minister broke the law. Mm -hmm. The Ethics Commissioner found him guilty of contravening four different sections of the Conflict of Interest Act. The, minister, the, the member across the way can confiscate all he wants, but he knows that we put the Accountability Act in to try to prevent this sort of thing. And his Prime Minister, not just another member of the House, as I said, they'd be gone in a minute if it wasn't the Prime Minister that contravened all these acts himself. He broke the law, and that's the bottom line. Questions and comments. The Honourable Deputy de Abitibi Temiskamek. The Honourable Member for Abitibi Temiskamek. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. What I find funny is that I hear Liberal MPs who say that this is not an important issue. I think it is important to understand that the issue is not just about vacationing with the Aga Khan. It is about whether the minister can show good judgment and through the accumulation of several incidents, for example, cash for access events, visiting the Aga Khan, many bills that contravened what was said during the election campaign, there is an accumulation of evidence that tells people that the minister lacks judgment. That is very concerning. I'm wondering if my colleague thinks that it is important to know whether or not the prime minister can exercise good judgment. When I hear that there's not enough money for veterans, I have doubts about his ability to exercise good judgment. Throughout my writing, there are people who may have wanted to vote Liberal, and then they ask, what is going on here? What is this all about? Does he agree that this is much broader than just the issue of the Aga Khan and is really about the capacity of the Prime Minister to exercise good judgment and the trust that the public may have in the Prime Minister to exercise his duties? Brendan Suris. Well, I thought I want to thank my honourable colleague for that excellent question. Uh, of course, I don't. Uh, believe that because of his actions, the Prime Minister has good judgment. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, it's very profound that the Prime Minister kind of thinks that he's the only one that needs to not pay this $200,000 back. As I said earlier, if any one of his colleagues did that, they'd be gone. Um, you know, Mr. Speaker, it, it, I just want to add uh, as well, when my colleague mentioned that, you know, the comments came out at one of his great town hall meetings the other day that that the veterans who have given, in some cases, uh, you know, as much as they can possibly give in severe injury and, and mental stress, that the Prime Minister says they're asking for too much. He can't help them anymore. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this seems to me to be a very clear lack of judgment in regards to the important issues of Canadians. And so, therefore, in answering my colleague's question, it's very, very clear that the Prime Minister has lost his reputation, if he had one in regards to that, in regards to being able to uh, carry out on a daily basis the concerns of this country when he won't even acknowledge that he had an illegal holiday and won't even pay the $200,000 back that it cost him.